still don't see why Mr. Monroe had to fire me. Well, what do you expect? A medal? Hmm? I'm sure in a mess this time. If there was a mess anywhere, you'd be in it. I've told you a million times, the minute you open up your mouth about me, you put your foot in it. Oh, you think that you had nothing to do with it. Well, that's what I say. As long as I'm around, you're going to keep getting yourself into more trouble. Pete, right. what do you say let's split up, huh? Oh, no. If we get separated again, we might never find each other. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Francis. What is it now? Mm. Oh. Can't we rest a while? I'm getting tired. Every day the same thing. When you were a second Louis, you could hike 40 miles. But now, 11 measly miles, look at you. Uh-huh. Oh, no, for Francis, you, you shouldn't do that. That's private property. Oh, oh let him sue me. Want a ride? Yeah. Hop in. Thanks. Uh, I have a friend with me. Well, he can ride him back. Uh, well, he's not exactly a friend. I, I mean, he's a friend, but he's not exactly. Uh, well, uh, that's him over there. Oh. Up, up, up You'll never learn. Mm. Oi! Hey, come here, fella. Well, I'll be doggone. You, you don't say. Hey, hey, Pete, come here. This is great news. What is it, Francis? Remember me telling you about my great aunt Regret who won the Derby? Yes. Well, this is Sir Gallant. His great aunt and my great aunt were sisters. Oh. Uh. How do you do? I'm I'm glad to know you. Does uh, he talk? Who ever heard of a talking horse? Well, I mean, well. Were you I don't happen to be a horse. Be that as it may, Pete, Sir Gallon has invited me to be his house guest, so <clears throat> I'll be seeing you. Francis, you're not leaving me. That sums it up. Come on, cuz. But, but where will I go? What'll I do? For the love of Burma mud, I nursed you through the war. How long do you expect me to keep it up? Well, well I, I wouldn't be in this trouble if you didn't know how to talk. Well, that's just what I've been saying. Oh, well... Uh, meet me here in the morning. Uh, but Francis... Uh... Huh? Oh, yeah. He says there's a motel about a mile down the road. Uh, no, no, Francis... Adios, Pete. <laughs> I was calling Francis. Oh, well, I'm Francis. Francis Travis. Oh, you're Francis with an E. I was calling Francis with an I. Oh, well, I know every stable boy in the place, and we don't have any Francis. 
Oh, well, he's not a boy. I mean, uh, he is a boy, but he isn't. Uh, he's a mule. A mule? Yes. Oh, is he the one with the striped brow band? That's right. Well, he was here. One of our thoroughbreds took a liking to him, and he wouldn't do a thing unless the mule was with him. Where are they? Well, they were shipped out. Well, I had an appointment with him. An appointment? With a mule? Well, I mean, I figured he'd be here. Oh, I'm sorry. We thought that he was one of our mules. We sent him along with Sir Gallant to the track. The track? Well, yes, the racetrack. Oh. We've moved most of our stable there. I'm on my way there now. I'd be glad to drive you. You would? And you can keep your appointment. Thank you. Mr. Sterling, I was thinking, since a gallant has become so attached to your mule, and we do want to keep our racehorses happy, would you consider selling? Sell Francis? Well, I couldn't. Well, I'm sure my grandfather would pay you a generous price. Yeah, I, I couldn't sell him. He, he doesn't belong to me. Oh, well, whose mule is he? Well, he isn't anyone's. Uh, we're just friends. Friends? You and a mule? Well, uh, we met in Burma in the army, and, and we've been together ever since. Uh... You don't think it's peculiar, my being so fond of a mule, do you? Well, of course not. We feel the same way about Sir Gallant. He's like one of the family. We bred him and we raised him. And now we have him in the $100,000 handicap. Oh, that's nice. I hope he wins. It's terribly important to us. Do you like horses, Mr. Sterling? Oh, yes. I never miss a Western movie. You'd love Sir Gallant. Now, you'd be crazy about Francis. He's so intelligent. Who, Francis? Why, no, Sir Gallant. He does everything but talk. Francis does everything. You mean everything but talk? No. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Those are our stalls over there. Your mule should be somewhere around here. That's Butcher Man. He's by Great Chief out of Little Runaway. You're by Great Chief out of Little Runaway? And here's Dairy Queen. She's a half-sister of ham and eggs. She said so. Good morning, Miss Travers. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. That's Oakwood Gal. She's nominated for the big handicap, but I think Grandpa's going to scratch her. Scratch her? Oh, she ought to enjoy that. Enjoy it? Yeah, I, I had a puppy once who just loved you me. You don't understand, Mr. Sterling. We're taking her out of the big race. She turned out to be a great disappointment. Oh, I'm sorry. Lots of early speed, but she just couldn't last the distance. But Sir Gallant's just the opposite. He's a great stretch runner. Stretch runner? Oh, you know, he starts slowly, but he finishes fast. Oh. It's funny, because they're full brother and sister. Oh, then she must be related to Francis, too. Oh, could Gal, a thoroughbred horse related to a mule? Oh, yeah, her, her great-aunt and Francis' great-aunt. They... <gasps> really, Mr. Sterling? Oh, uh, you know, uh, really, if you... Grandpa, what's wrong? I'm afraid Betsy Sue isn't going to run tomorrow. Oh, no. Is it anything serious? I don't know. We can't figure it out. In my opinion, it's a case of side bone, Miss Travers. There seems to be a definite ossification of the side gristles and the coffin bone. I don't agree, Dr. Quimby. I think it's definitely a navicular disease. Oh, that's impossible, Dr. Marbury. There seems to be an acute inflammation of the shuttle bone with involvement of the flexor tendon and bursi. Oh, Sam, excuse me, where would I find Sir Gallant? Well, man, where would you find the favorite but in the best stall at the track? The first one, down there. Thank you. Yeah. Francis! Oh, no! Francis, am I glad to see you. <laughs> For the love of mud, I thought I lost you. Well, I was worried about you. Are you all right? Am I all right? Hey, hey. Well, what are you doing here in Sir Gallant's stall? Any idea where I could shack up fancier? Well, what about Sir Gallant? What about me? I provide him with a certain rather obvious type of companionship. He provides me with facilities to live in the style I enjoy. As the old saying goes, Petey boy, I'm eating high on that hog. But where, where is Sir Gallant? Next door. I told him, being a guest, I'm entitled to the best room. Oh, I, I really don't think you should impose upon your relatives, Francis. Impose? Huh? The trouble with Sir Gallant is he's too polite. And that's one habit I'll have to break him of. But not until I'm ready to leave, which is a good idea for you. 
Then what's a good idea? For you to hightail it home and try and get your job back at the bank. Well, I'm not going to let you stay here forever. Why not? People around here are even dumber than Sir Gallant. Look at all that fuss about Betsy Sue. Ain't nothing wrong with her. No, Betsy Sue happens to be sick. Sick, eh? She's got a little splinter in her neck. But will they take it out? No, they'll stick needles in her and fill her so full of pills she'll really be sick. Well, been a nice visit, Pete. Drop me a line sometime. Well, that's the way you want it. Goodbye. Oh, come back here. You can't get a bus home till tomorrow. Where are you going to spend the night? Well, I, uh... You better check in at the Briar Motel. Strictly a flea bag, but it beats that haystack. Uh, Pete, I think I'll be taking my siesta. Oh, oh la cucaracha, la cucaracha. Johnny Petty coming on. Okay, no, there. <sighs> This should relieve the pain. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Mr. Sterling, I'd forgotten about you. Oh, I just wanted to thank you for driving me down here, Miss Travers. Oh, I'm afraid I've been rather rude, but we've all been so worried about Betsy Sue's condition. Oh, you shouldn't worry. There's really nothing wrong with her. What's that, young man? Oh, she has just a tiny splinter in her neck. Just a tiny splinter in her neck. Indeed. Young man, are you a vet? Yes, sir. Eighteen months in Burma. No, no. I mean, are you a veterinarian? Oh, uh, no, sir. I'm sorry. We're busy. Just a minute. Dr. Marbury, do you have a pair of tweezers? Hey. Oh. Look! Ah. Well, I'll be incredible. Mr. Sterling, you're wonderful. Well, I've lived among horses all my life. I've never seen anything like that before. How could you possibly know? Well, I... it's... Uh... Please, don't ask me. Don't ask you? Well, I, I mean, I, I'd rather not say, sir. I... I... If, um... Mr. Sterling, you're wonderful. Mr. Sterling, you're wonderful. Mr. Sterling. You're nuts. Francis! Oh. What a dump. Well, what are you doing here, Francis? Must be the mother instinct in me. How much money you got? More than $20. How much more? A little more. How much? $20.04. Well, that ain't gonna last you long. Mm -mm. Do you know how to put a bet on a horse? Why? Because you need some dough, and I'm gonna get you some. In the fourth race tomorrow, Betsy Sue is the favorite. You, you want me to bet on her? No. She ain't gonna win. Well, how do you know? She's emotionally frustrated. Oh. She's what? Literally translated, Betsy Sue is carrying a torch. What are you talking about? Oh, she went and fell in love with a plug named Shelby, and last week they shipped him to Bay Meadows. Betsy Sue hasn't got me more interest in running than you have. Well, how do you know all this? By the tale of my great aunt Regret, who won the Derby, don't you think I know my way around? Francis. Huh? Do you mean to say that the horses talk over the races? Uh-huh. It's Sudden Storm by Six Links. Yeah. Uh, five, five tickets on Sudden Storm, please. What's the number? Yeah, I, I just Sudden Storm. I don't know. Number 11. And that's the way she'll finish. Five tickets on 11. Ten dollars. Yeah. Why, Mr. Sterling? Oh, Miss Travers. Well, you ran off yesterday without giving us a chance to thank you. This is my grandfather, Colonel Travis. Oh, how do you do, sir? That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life, Mr. Sterling. Oh, well, how is Betsy Sue feeling? Fit as a fiddle. 
I hope you're going to have a little bet on her. Well, no, sir. Why not? She's a full second faster than anything in the race. In her last four, she carried six more, one three, and placed once. My goodness. Oh, we better get our bets down before we shut out. Yeah, how much to be? Now, 200 to win? Only 200? All right, we'll make it four. Uh, but, but, sir, uh, I, I, I'm afraid you'll be sorry. Sorry? Yes, Betsy Sue isn't going to win this race. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion, young man. That's what makes horse racing. Oh, it's not an opinion. Sudden Storm is going to win by six lengths. Well, how do you know? Hmm? Well, Betsy Sue won't even try. Won't try? Why not? Well, she's... She's emotionally frustrated. Emotionally frustrated? A horse? <laughs> Come on. Starting for home, it's Betsy Sue by a nose. In the stretch, it's Betsy Sue and Sudden Storm. And now it's Sudden Storm taking the lead by the way. It's Sudden Storm by two, by three, by four lengths, galloping Jim and Betsy Sue. And down to the finish line, it's Sudden Storm, the winner, by six lengths, galloping Jim is second. Mikey Lyle is third, and Betsy Sue is Some race, huh? Fourth. Yeah, some race. Mind you, Damer, there may not be anything to it, but it was more than strange the way he called that race. Oh, uh, Grandpa, I think it's just a coincidence. I don't know, Miss Travers, but we'll soon find out. A uh, pretty big haul you made there, eh, fella? Oh, yes, sir. I uh, think you ought to come along and have a little talk with the chief. The chief? The chief who? Who are you? What, what does he want with me? I, I haven't done anything. I, oh. Who, me? You. But, but, but look, you, you... So you knew Betsy Sue wasn't going to win? Uh, yes, sir. And you knew Sudden Storm was going to win by exactly six lengths? Uh, yes, sir. He cashed five tickets on Sudden Storm, chief. Hundred dollar tickets? No, two. Two dollars? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, uh, Peter Sterling. Been at the track long? Uh, just since yesterday. Have you seen him before? Not me, Chief. You a professional tout? Uh, what, Chief? Ed, uh, sir. A tout? Tipster? Where'd you get your information? What information? Why were you so certain Betsy Sue wouldn't win that race? Uh, well, uh, well, she's emotionally frustrated. She's what? Uh, well, she's carrying a torch. A torch? Young man, you, you are talking about a horse. Oh, yes, sir. Frustrated? All right, wise guy, what are you trying to pull? Steady, him. Well, it's all on account of Shelby. Who? Well, Betsy Sue fell in love with Shelby. Now, he's gone, and she's emotionally frustrated. This guy is nuts. Young man, ten years with the FBI, six years at this track, and that's the most ridiculous statement I ever heard. Look, Chief, just give me five minutes with this guy. Yeah. Just a moment, gentlemen. Now, there was a horse named Shelby around the track. You remember him, Grandpa, that big bay stallion with the pepper tree stables? Yes, I do. He was shipped north about a week ago. And right after he left, Betsy Sue went off her feed. And that's true, too. Colonel Travers, you don't for a moment believe it. I don't know what to believe, Harrington. All I know is the filly wasn't trying. Young man, did you ever work for the pepper tree stables? The who, sir? He couldn't have, Chief. I'd never seen him around this track before. And how in thunder did you know about Betsy Sue and Shelby? And who told you Sudden Storm was going to win? Yes, and who told you she would win by six lengths? Yeah, who told you? Well, well... I can't tell you, I promised. Quit the stall and tell us whom you promised. Well, I can't. Why not? Uh, well, I promised and I, and I just can't tell you. All right, young man. That'll be all. You mean I can go? Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble. You're not just going to let him walk out, are you, Chief? Either that kid's a complete nincompoop or a great actor. It's your job to find out which. All right. But if you ask me, I think the kid's got rocks in his head. There's the Harrington. <clears throat> if that boy's working with a gambling ring, well, that's your department. But if he's on the level, I desperately need a man who understands horses the way he seems to. So if you don't mind, I, I'll keep an eye on him myself. Come with him. You really know horses, don't you? Well, I've met a few. Yeah, I bet you have. You know their moods, their whims. 
I suppose that's why you knew that Sudden Storm was going to win. <laughs> when a man understands horses inside, he, he senses those things, doesn't he, my boy? Why, well, I suppose so. Still, then, I'm going to put my cards on the table. For years, I've been trying to win the big $100,000 handicap. So far, I haven't even been on the money. This year, I've got the favorite. I know, Sir Gallant. Yes, only this time it isn't just a matter of prestige. I've made some very bad business investments and lost a lot of money. I, I need the winner's share of the purse. Oh, I'd like to help you, sir, but... but you can help. If anything was to go wrong with Sir Gallant, I need someone around who understands what goes on inside horses. What bothers them mentally? What makes them tick? Oh, oh please, Mr. Sterling. It would mean so much to us. Well, I, I'm sorry, Miss Travers, but I... It would? Uh, well, I, uh... Would it? Francis. Huh? Fran oh, no. This must be an optical illusion. Shh. Shh. My foot. I thought you were on your way home. Didn't you bet on Sudden Storm? Yeah, I did. Then what are you doing here? Oh, I'm going to work here. There's which... I said I'm going to work here. I told Miss Travers what was wrong with Betsy Sue, and now they all think I'm a horse expert. You're an expert, all right. Well, I couldn't tell them the truth, could I? I promised you I wouldn't. Well, couldn't you turn the job down without any explanation? Well, I, I started to, but... Did you ever look into her eyes? Into whose eyes? Not that Travers dame. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, uh, she ain't my type. Now, what am I going to do, Francis? I don't know one end of a horse from another. Well, I do, and I can tell the difference from where I'm standing. And you're not going to help me? No, that skirt got you in this letter or get you out. Shh. Oh, Mr. Sterling, I heard voices and figured I'd better investigate. Who was you talking to? Hmm? Uh, well, nobody. Uh, I, I was just singing. La, 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 la. Good night, ladies. Good night, Francis. Good night, Francis. I'll see you in my dream. Good night, Francis. Good night, Francis. I'll see you in my dream. That's the talking the singing I ever heard. Very well, Rogers. When you advanced that money, it was on the understanding that I wouldn't have to pay it back till the end of the season. Yeah, I know, Colonel. But I've been running a little tough luck myself. I need the dough now. Can't you wait two more weeks till after the big race? No dice. The paper says payable on demand. And that's how it's going to be. But you know what this game is like, Rogers. I, I just don't have that much cash. Then you haven't any horses either. I'm bringing the moving vans and the sheriff over the track in the morning. I'm sorry. Good night, Miss Travers. Good night, Colonel. He seems so anxious to lend that money. I should have suspected he was after our stable. Grandpa, we still have my money. Why can't we use that? <laughs> $25,000. I'll need three times that amount. I was counting on the big race. Yes, I know, Grandpa, but why can't we just buy back Sir Gallant? No, no, I'm through with horses. And that goes for you, too. It's taken me a long time to find out. I should have known when it broke your father's heart and... and his bank account. They're too rich for our blood. Excuse me. Mr. Sterling is here. Come in, Sterling. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry to come back so late, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Now, now, don't ask me why, but I've got to quit my job. I've got some news for you, Sterling. I haven't got any horses, and you haven't got a job. <laughs> oh, that pickle. I'm sensitive. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
What are all the noises? I don't know. Butcher man. Butcher man. The colonel was all broken up. I sure feel sorry for Miss Travers and, and the colonel. Well, better get your suitcase and let's get out of here. You mean you want me with you? Go on, get your suitcase. Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Well, a copper and a sheriff. I always say there's nothing like doing things legal. It's probably the first time you ever did anything legal. You're a real funny man, aren't you, Mr. Dana? Hey, Joe. Get up, good gal. Chuck? Yeah. Down the install and get Sagal. Handle him easy. Well, Mr. Rogers. How do you like this horse? He lives better than I do. <laughs> This crummy looking animal is a favorite. I'm betting a long shot. Are oh, you a dumb jackass? Can't you tell a horse from a mule? A mule? I thought this was Sir. Well, whatever he is, he comes along. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on! Come on before I bash your brains out. Take it easy, you'll last longer. Keep your nose out of this, you dumb cop. Hey, who are you calling a dumb cop? I didn't say nothing, I... Look, one more crack like that, jerk, and I'll monogram your bridge work. Well, let's see you do it. Oh, you would, would you? Why, you too big? Right, I didn't say nothing. I didn't even open my mouth. All right, get out of here with this mule before I forget myself and break in half. You and who else? Huh? Okay, wise guy. There. Sheriff! 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 Sheriff!
Try and keep her about five lengths ahead of Sir Gallant. Okay, boss. And you, keep a tight rein on him, or he'll pass the filly as though she were standing still. I merely want to see how Sir Gallant looks next. Okay, boys. Well, it looks like Square Deal Mallory is back in business. And your name doesn't even appear on the records. Let's keep it that way. Who's that? I don't know, boss. I saw him around the track yesterday. Get rid of him. Uh, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Oh, my name is Peter Sterling. I represent Colonel Travers. Yeah? Uh, well, well I, I don't exactly represent Colonel Travers. I represent his granddaughter. And I, uh, well, well, that is she. I, I mean, uh, well, we, uh, well, anyway, we'd like to buy back Sir Gallon. Yeah? Uh, well, well, wait till you hear the price I have to offer. $25,000. 25 grand? Yes, sir. <laughs> I wouldn't sell you one end of the horse for that. Well, well, we don't want one end. We want both ends. <laughs> Beat it, Junior. We're busy. Uh, but... but Mr. Rogers, uh, Mr. Rogers, if, if you'll just give me a moment. I told you, scram. You may have, uh... That Sir Gallant is something to watch. Yeah, he sure is. That Sir Gallant is something to watch, isn't he? Look at him running away from the other horse. Sir Gallant's the one in back. That's Oakwood Gal out front. Oh. Well, I don't know why the Colonel thinks so much of Sir Gallant. He can't even get close to Oakwood Gal. Look, Junior, I don't know why I'm bothering to explain, but well, this... Well, Mr. Rogers, it looks like your little secret is out. Secret? This young man here seems to have an instinctive eye for horses. Oh, I've been told that before. <laughs> Why, only an expert could determine so quickly that Sir Gallant's reputation is overrated and that Oakwood Gal is the far superior horse. Oh, I'm not really an expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, young man, uh, that money you offered Mr. Rogers, is it immediately available? Oh, yes, sir. I have it right, right here on me. It, it's uh, in cash. Cash uh, offer. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, it so happens that I'm an old friend of Colonel Travers and... Uh, oh, really? Yes. And if you could figure out some way of taking care of him, I'd be most grateful. Well, um, I'd like to please both you gentlemen, well, but... Why don't you two go over to your office, Mr. Rogers, and discuss the matter? But I, uh... As a personal favor to me. Very well. Suppose we do that, Mr. Sterling? Fine. <laughs> No, I've made up my mind. As soon as I can arrange jobs for everyone, I'll put the place up for sale. Something may change your mind, Grandpa. Nothing will change it. We're going to move as far away from racetracks as we can. He's here! Who's here? Oh, Grandpa, I've got the most wonderful surprise. I'm not in the mood for surprises. You will be for this one. We have Sir Gallant back. Sir Gallant? I don't understand. I bought him. Grandpa, it's the only time I ever disobeyed you, but I just had to. I suppose I ought to be angry with you for this. But Sir Gallant is back. <laughs> and now we'll win the big race, and we'll start another stable bigger and better than ever. I don't know how you ever talked Mr. Rogers into it. Oh, Peter, you're wonderful. It was nothing. Becky, come on. Sir Gallant? This isn't Sir Gallant, it's Oakwood Gal. That's right, you were both wrong about her. Peter, you didn't buy Oakwood Gal. Oh, yes, you see. Well, where's Sir Gallant? Well, Mr. Rogers is keeping him, but confidentially, he's not half the horse that this one is. I know which is the best horse, Ellen. I raised them both. Yeah, but you should have seen them racing around the track. Why, Sir Gallant couldn't even get close to Oakwood Gal, and Mr. Rogers said... Rogers? That... Sterling, how much did you pay for her? Well, I offered him $25,000, $42, and... $25,000? $42.17, but, but he was nice enough to let me have it for less. How much? Less. 
$42.17. Still in them? This is some kind of joke. Well, well, no, sir. I've got the bill of sale and all the papers oh, right here. Oh, no. You haven't already signed for her. How could you, Peter? But you don't understand. Sir Gallon has a big reputation, but Oakwood Gal. All right, sir. Then what's your game? The game? Yes. In another month, we could have bought this filly in the $2,000 claiming race. How much are you getting from Rogers? Well, well, nothing. I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. You know too much about horses not to know you were doing the wrong thing. I think this is a matter for the police. Uh, but, uh, but, but Colonel Travers, uh, uh, well, well, you, you, uh, well, I, uh... Hey, that was quite a little huddle you had with Mr. Square Deal Mallory, wasn't it? Square Deal Mallory? I don't know anyone by that name. Oh, don't hand me that. I saw you with him. How long have you been working for the syndicate? Syndicate? I, I'm not working for anyone. Oh, no? Well, before I'm through with you, kid, you'll be working for the state for the next ten years. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. You believe that, don't Come you? Come on, you and me better have another little powwow with the chief. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can prove that I don't know any gamblers or syndicates. Now, I, I can prove that I don't know anything. I've got a witness. This is your witness? Yes, sir. Uh, Francis. <clears throat> Who are you talking to? Francis. He's my witness. Now, will you please tell these people that I don't know anything about racetracks or gamblers? This guy is nuts. Uh, please. Uh, I think I should explain that Francis dislikes talking in front of strangers. Mr. Sterling, are you trying to tell us that your mule talks? Yes. Just like I'm talking to you now? Well, his voice is a little deeper, sir, but... Look, I don't know what kind of a trick this is, but you're going back with me to the chief. Now, now Francis, say something. He's going to take me to the chief. Oh, this is ridiculous. Now, you've got to help me. Now, look, think how long we've been friends. Think of what we've been through together. Now, I can kick you in the... Francis, don't be stubborn. Say something. I'll say something. You and me are going bye-bye. Please, Mr. Damer, may I speak to you and Grandpa outside for a minute? All right. Look, wise guy, don't try anything funny, because I'll be right outside the door. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, Clay, the ore day. Oh, now you talk. Uh, what's this about you and the chief? I've got to have $25,000 right away. How much? $25,000. That's what I thought you said. Well, I've got to return the money, or they'll send me to jail. Happy days. I bought the wrong horse. I bought a good gal instead of Sir Gallon. Ah, uh, that's a nice logical mistake. Uh. Oh, don't talk with your mouth full. Does no folks ever teach you anything? Huh? What do you mean? One's a girl horse and one's a boy horse. Oh. oh. It wasn't a mistake. I just wasn't interested. Oh, come back here. Are you going to help me? Huh? You suppose you can stall that cop off for a couple of hours? Huh? Well, what for? How much loot you got? $42.17. I am going to slip you a seven-horse parlay. Seven-horse parlay? Is that good? Is that good? Look, you bet $40 to win on the first horse. Then after you win, you bet it all on the next one. Oh. You keep betting, you'll have $25,000 by the end of the last race. Hmm. Have you got a pencil? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Get to right. Wait, wait, wait now. Okay. The first race is Golden Baby. Uh, Golden Baby. Second race, Seesaw. Second race, Seesaw. Fourth race. Fourth. What about the third race? Skip the third. Those scatterbrained two-year-olds don't even know themselves who's going to win. In the fourth race, it's extravagant. Look, Miss Travers, I got as much respect for a war hero as the next guy, but that don't excuse him. But don't you see, getting all those medals in Burma and then winding up in the hospital so many times, well, it may have left its mark on him. I knew there was something peculiar about that boy. Well, I still can't believe that he would do anything like that deliberately. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I think we ought to give him an opportunity to return the money. Then if he doesn't, we can prefer charges. Now in the eighth, it's Blue Buckle. You got it? How do you know all these horses are going to win? Shh. FBI. FBI? Uh-huh. Feedback information. Yeah. <laughs>
It's Falling Star Hot Food and Legal Counsel. It's Falling Star taking the lead. Hot Food Legal Counsel and Andy Sutter once together. And here comes Golden Baby between horses. Golden Baby's making her move. It's Falling Star and Golden Baby. Golden Baby and Falling Star, then neck and neck. It's the first Golden race isn't over yet. I know. And they're coming down the wire. It's Golden Baby, the winner. Falling Star is second. Legal Counsel third and Hot Food finish fourth. Lucky today, huh? Yes, sir. No, as long as the colonel was sucker enough to give you 24 hours, instead of hanging around the track, why don't you try to get him back his 25 Gs? Well, that's what I'm doing. You want something, bud? No, just waiting. It is Seesaw, the winner by three lengths. George's vote second, Barrelhead third, and Furlong finished fourth. You ain't betting a third race? Oh, no, sir. What's the matter? Even the horses don't know who's going to win this one. Pardon. The horses! In this trend, it's extravagant royal mystery, cat line and clean away. It's extravagant and royal mystery, head and head. The race isn't over yet, buddy. I know. Extravagant and royal mystery, and it's extravagant. The winner. It is now. Wait a minute, Whitey. Let me see those. Take them. Okay. 1,000, 1,050, 1,100, 1,150. ain't even started. He knows. Four thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand five hundred and eighty. So I asked him, I says, uh, how come you ain't betting a third race? Do you know what he tells me? He said, even the horses don't know who's going to win that one. You're positive he doesn't talk to anybody? Nobody but me, but nobody. And he's picked six winners already. Hmm. I better have another talk with this young man. Yeah, okay, Chief. I'm telling you, this kid is nuts. 20,000, 21, 22. I didn't think the blue buckle had a chance. 23, 24, 25,000, 1, 2, 10, 20, 25,220 dollars. Thank you. You're welcome. I understand you bet a few races today, Mr. Sterling. Seven, sir. And how many did you win? Seven, sir. You didn't bet the third race, Sterling. Why not? Well, Francis said that even the horses didn't know who was going to win that one. Francis said? Not the Francis I met in the stall. Stay out of this, Damon. And who, Mr. Sterling, is Francis? Well, Fran... Oh, I, I can't tell you, sir. I can tell you, Chief, and it'll hand you a laugh. Francis... Don't even stay out of this. Is this guy Francis one of Square Deal Mallory's boys? Oh, no, sir. He isn't anybody's boy. Why can't you tell us who he is? Well, you, you wouldn't believe me. First, you tell us Betsy Sue has a complex and sudden storm will win. Today, you hit a seven-horse parley. <laughs> Sterling, I'd believe anything. Anything? Anything. Well, sir, uh, Francis is a mule. I told you, the kid's crazy. Did you say mule? Yes, sir. You want I should smack him, boss? What sort of mule? Uh, a very intelligent mule. A very intelligent mule. Now let's take this a little slower. You say this mule tells you things. Is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, just one, boss. Let right on the button. Now, exactly how does this mule talk to you? 
Well, what do you mean, sir? I mean, does he talk to you the way I talk to you in English? In English? Oh, oh, yes, sir. I tell you, the kid's off his rocker. And this mule, this Francis, tells you about horses? Yes, sir. I see. I suppose, Mr. Sterling, you think you're very clever. No, no, sir. Then you must think we're crazy. You think you can twist this track around your finger? What's the matter with you, young man? But nothing. I'll tell you what's the matter with you. You're impertinent or a fool or both. Yes, sir. I don't know what your game is, but you won't get away with it. If it takes every last resource of the racing association. Every last cent, understand? But, but you don't... Now get out of here. Come on, beat it! Don't let him out of your sight. Not for a second. Right, Chief. Be a closer tail on him than on his mule. Hey, Francis. Yeah? I got it. Well, what kept you so long? Hmm? Well, I was arrested again. Oh, what for? Well, the inspector wanted to know how I picked all those horses. And you told him. Well, what could I do? Oh, I know. How much money you got in that bag? Oh, I've got $25,220. Oh, and 10 cents. Well, you better go see the colonel and buy back Oakwood Gal. Fire? What do you expect to do? Give him the money and let him keep the horse? Well, what would I do with the racehorse? With that one, I don't know. She's still in it in the handicap, ain't she? Yes. Well, since we're stuck with her, we might as well see what we can do to make her win. Who is we? Oh, let's just say we'll handle this together. I got a hunch about that, Philly. Shh, somebody's coming. Out the back door. And bring back that horse. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mule. Who do you like in the fifth tomorrow? Me talking to a jackass. I must be losing my marbles, too. nonsense about your being able to talk. Say something. What about those seven winners? Say, Chief. Who said that? I did. It's true. You, you can talk. But, but you... Boss, it's me. Damon. You so much as breathe a word of this. One single word, I'll have hey, you... boss, don't let it throw you. I, I just did the same thing myself. You too. That kid will have us as crazy as he is. Let, let's get out of here. <laughs> there it is, $25,000. I couldn't believe it, Stellan. I just couldn't believe it. Seven winners, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Now I'll take Oakwood Gal and be on my way. But you seem mighty anxious to buy her back. Oh, well, no, sir. You said... It couldn't be that you think she's a pretty good filly and has a chance to win the big handicap. Oh, I wouldn't know anything about that, sir. No? Well, either you knew enough about horses to pick seven winners, or you knew something else. Perhaps about a little inside fixing by Mr. Mallory. Grandpa, I think we're being very unfair. I don't think he ever heard of Mr. Mallory before yesterday. You do believe that, don't you? Peter, you know how much winning this handicap means to us. Do you think Oakwood Gal stands any sort of chance? Oh, I, I'm sure she does. What makes you so certain? Well, uh, please don't ask me. Well, if you think that she might win, will, will you help us get her ready? Well, I know nothing about horses. Huh. Seven winners, $25,000, and he says he knows nothing. Man, no oh man, I'd like to be that ignorant. Please, Peter, we need you. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Travers. I, I'd like to, but I can't. Re really, if, if there was any... If, well, before I can take the job, I've got to explain to somebody. Explain to somebody? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sir, I've promised. Whom did you promise? Well, I can't tell you. Why not? Well, because I promised. Now, 
If you will excuse me, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, uh, good night, Colonel Travers. I don't like the sound of that. Darling? Yes, sir? A friend of yours wants to see you. Well, I bet. It's just as I thought. What? Sterling leaving with two of Mallory's men. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Square Deal. But they didn't tell me it was you. So nice of you to drop in, Mr. Sterling. Oh, they, well, I didn't exactly drop in. These two men. Uh, they me. deliver my invitations. Thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. Oh, uh, Miss Van Rensselaer. May I present Mr. Peter Sterling? How do you do? Oh, uh, oh I, I thank you, ma'am. You're much younger than I expected. Oh, no, I, I'm really much older than I am. I, I mean, uh... Hey, Elaine, my dear, will you pour Mr. Sterling a drink? Oh, surely. Oh, no, no, thank you. I, I, I can't stay. I, I, I have a previous appointment. Oh, come now, Mr. Sterling. Sit down. I have a little proposition. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I, I... A proposition? Yes. Sit down. Since you've learned my nickname, Mr. Sterling, I assume you've also learned my business. Well, they said you were a gambler. Oh, a slight exaggeration. I'm in the uh, brokerage business. With all modesty in my particular field, I'm one of the most successful. Well, I knew a broker when I worked in the bank. Oh, I handle a slightly different type of investment. I, I speculate on horses. Which horse is going to win, that is. Well, that's almost like gambling. In fact, it is gambling. <laughs> Not when you have the right information, Mr. Sterling. However, it seems I, I now have a rival whose sources of information are better than my own. No, thank you. Uh, really, sir? Who, sir? You, Mr. Sterling. Who, me, sir? Yes. So, I am prepared to offer you a partnership in my organization. A partnership? With your information and my connections, we could make a great deal of money. A great deal of money. Uh, well, well, I already have a job uh, with Colonel Travers. I get $75 a week. I think I can start you off with slightly more than that. Say, a thousand dollars a week more? Oh, well, that's awfully... Uh, th 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 every week? And all you have to do is tell me where you get your information. Well, what information? The horses, Mr. Sterling. Which ones are going to win? Oh. There's something wrong? I was afraid you'd ask me that. Oh, come now. If we're to trust each other, I must know. Well, I I'd like to tell you, but I can't. Well, I can promise you, absolutely promise you, full protection. Oh, no, sir, it isn't that. Then what is it? But you wouldn't believe me. Nonsense. Seven winners in seven races. Good heavens, man, I'd believe anything. I don't think so. In other words, you won't tell me. You really must know? Where, Mr. Sterling? Where do you get your information? Well, Francis told me. Who? Francis. Francis who? Well, Francis, a mule. Did you say mule? Yes, ma'am. Oh, really, Mr. Sterling? Shut up. What kind of mule? Uh, uh, well, a, a regular mule. Uh, we, we were friends in the army. Are you trying to tell me that you get your information from a mule? Yes, sir. That he talks to you? Yes, sir. One of us is crazy, Mr. Sterling, and I'm sure it isn't me. Yes, sir. Now stop the double talk. Where do you get your information? Well, I, I told you you wouldn't believe me. Nobody does, but it's the truth. Hmm. Smart boy. Well, if you won't divulge the source of your information, I'm sure you wouldn't mind splitting a few tips with me. Suppose you spend the night here and be my guest at the track tomorrow. Oh, I, I can't. That appointment. To talk to the mule, I suppose. Oh, yes, sir. I've got to explain to him. That... I suggest you change your plans, Mr. Sterling. <laughs> Okay, Bob, what do you like? Uh, I'd like a hot dog with mustard. Who do you like in the first? Who's going to win? Uh, I really have no idea. Oh, he ain't got any idea. The boss says that you was to pick him, so pick him. Miss Q. Hester. Did you see what I saw? Yeah, I, I seen it. Miss Q. Hester. Why, she's a dog. I thought it was a horse race. 
Now, the boss must know what he's doing. But let's go plunk it down. Where do you think you're going? Well, you told me I had to bet, didn't you? At your two-buck window? Gee, you're kidding. Thirty-two tickets in number six. Thirty-two tickets? Start shelling out. Six. How many? Thirty-two. Thirty-two on number six, huh? I think maybe I'll put a five spot on number six myself. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Gringo is the winner. Pick him up his second and third feather. And the horse coming in now is Miss Q. Hester. Miss Q. Hester. The boss will blow his cork. Yeah, when I went out and phoned Miss Q. Hester in, he said he was going to bet 10 G's. That better up in a mistake, Junior. Yes, sir. 40 tickets on number nine. Listen, kid. Black spots better win, or you'll find yourself in a mess of trouble. Yes, sir. Okay, they got the four J's. Four grand on number nine. Four grand on number nine. Understand it, Chief. Seven straight winners yesterday, seven straight losers today. The eighth race isn't over yet. Why aren't you out there watching? They only got two riding on this one. Two thousand? Two bucks. That's their bankroll. And it's two bucks more than I got left. Hmm. And that seven horse parlor yesterday was just a fluke. Oh, I sure hate to think what Mallory's gonna do to that kid. The rumors around he dropped more than two hundred grand. Well, that's not our responsibility. As far as I'm concerned, the matter's closed. All right, Chief. Boy, that kid must be nuts. That He's out in front. Come on. He's out in front. He's gaining. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe we ought to plug him now. And maybe the boss has got other ideas. Come on. He won. He won. I told you. He won. He won. <laughs> you know what that $2 ticket will pay? You just made yourself 40 cents. Well, yeah, yeah, but I picked the winner. Yeah, you sure did. The boss will want to split the winnings with you. Come on. You cost me $200,000. Start talking. Yeah, what do you want me to talk about? About seven losers in a row. Well, it was all your fault. My fault? Yes, you wouldn't let me get to Francis. Are you going to start that mule business again? Yes, sir. Sterling, I could have you fitted with cement slippers and dropped in the harbor. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take you to Francis. You're what? Yeah, you can talk to him yourself. Me? Roy Mallory? Talk to a mule? I should say not. So this is where you get your information. Uh, yes, sir. This is Francis. Go ahead. Make him talk. Uh, hello, Francis. Uh, hello, Francis. I didn't hear him answer you. He didn't. Uh, uh, Francis, uh, this gentleman is Mr. Square Deal Mallory. Uh, I had to come to you. Now, you've got to show him that you can talk. Now, say something, Francis, please. Well? Uh, Francis, if you ever did anything for me, do it now. Just one little yes. Even a no. Oh, 
He, he's like this sometimes. Sometimes. Francis, think of what we went through together in the war. They're going to make me some end slippers and drop me in the harbor. Maybe he's hard of hearing. No, no, no. He hears me already. He's just stubborn. That's all. Now, Francis, I demand you to say something. I'll say something. Two hundred thousand dollars worth. You're crazy. But I tell you, Francis can talk. I'm going to have a couple of the boys take care of you. But you, you wouldn't do anything to anybody that's crazy, would you? Because I don't think you're responsible, I'm going to let you off with a little friendly advice. Get out of town while you're still in one piece. <laughs> He seemed a little peeved. Peeved? He wants to kill me. Why? We lost a little at the track today. We? How much did you go for? Well, the... Uh, whole 25,000. 25? Oh, my aching back. Francis, I wish I was dead. You know something? I'll drink to that. Pete, you'll find a sack stashed over in that feed bin over there. Sack? What for? Ah, uh, get it out. Well, oh, you ask the darndest things at the darndest times. Yeah. Why, it's beer and whiskey. Uh-huh. Stable hands never take a chance on getting caught short. Now, Peter, my boy, get me a bucket. What do you want the bucket for? So I can drink out of it. Imbibing from a bottle seems a bit crude, don't you think? Francis, do you drink? After seven years in the army? <laughs> Start pouring. What'll I open it with? Hold it behind me. Behind you? Yeah, go on. Behind you. Get on the other side, I'm left footed. How's this? A little lower. You all set? Fire. Bullseye. Quite a touch you got there, Pete. Francis, do you think you should? Silly boy. Keep pouring. Don't stop now. More? That ain't enough to wet my whistle. More. Same place? Same place. Fire two. Roger. Three. Check. Come on, four. <laughs> That's more like it. Uh, oh, ain't you joining me? Huh? Now, you know I don't drink. Oh, twist your arm. Grab a bottle. Wish we had some pretzels. Huh? Well, here's mud in your eye. Oh, bring back my body to me. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the... Francis, you're loaded. I don't know why. You only had one drink. I said you're loaded. Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous. Silly. Pity, old boy. You're a nice kid. You and me are buddies all through the war together. <laughs> Could you slobber? Shame, Pete. <laughs> now, what's so funny? The idea of Oakwood gal winning the big race. <laughs> like that $100,000 handicap. 
Why don't you stand still when I speak to you? I am standing don't still. Don't interrupt. Uh, Pete, old wood gal might be able to win that race if she wanted to. Uh, excuse me. Wish she don't. Well, why doesn't she? She has an inf an, an inferiority complex. Wait, wait. Shh. We're getting company. Yeah, but this... Bye. Stay. Peter! Oh, hello, Colonel. Uh, Miss Travers. Who's in here with you? Huh? Well, nobody. Uh, nobody but Francis. I'm sorry I didn't report this morning, sir, but... What are you doing here at this hour? What was all that racket? Well, I just came to see Francis. Uh, young man, <clears throat> I'll give you two minutes to take your mule and get off my property. Oh, but, sir, there's something I must tell you. Two minutes? Now, Miss Travers, you've got to listen to me. I know how Oakwood gal can win the handicap. By crooked methods? We're not interested. Well, Francis isn't crooked. Are you deferring to that animal? Yes, sir. He's got a plan. He's got a plan? What sort of nonsense is this? It's not nonsense. You share a mouthful. Who said that? Who said that? Give your shirt on, Colonel. I said it. I don't believe it. You know? <laughs> Miss... No! Oh, I'm... Well, hello, Stan. Colonel, give us some water. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Uh, Miss, Miss Travers, are, are you all right? Sure, the name's all right. My body lies over the ocean. Here you are, my dear. My I don't believe it, Sally. It's impossible. You're a ventriloquist. Oh, no, sir. Here, yeah, yeah. give me that. Go on, drink it. What do you want? You drink it. Go on. All right, now. Go on. Talk while he's drinking. Drink while he's drinking the water. Go on, talk. I defy you. Oh, what do you want me to say? Excuse me. He can talk. Oh, listen, lady. You fade once more, and I won't hear full. Oh, full if... I won't live a hole to help you. As a matter of fact, I... Francis! Uh-huh. Francis! What happened? What's wrong? Francis has passed out. Francis, are you all right? Stop shouting. Oh, He's all right. Certainly I'm all right. And get this silly junk off my head. Well, you had us up all night. Oh, what day is this? Hmm? Huh? It's Tuesday. Tuesday? Holy cow. Well, if I'm going to save the situation, the sooner I get started, the better. Where's Oakwood gal? Cat got your tongue, Colonel? Hmm? Oh, uh... She's in the next barn here, in the middle stall. That's cool. Come on ahead. Come on. Oh, here she is. Well, what now, Francis? Off the record, there's nothing wrong with Oakwood Gal except a bad case of hero worship. Hero worship? You know how kid sisters are about the big brothers. Well, she's convinced she can't beat Sir Gallant. It's given her an inferiority complex. Well, 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 what are you going to do, Francis? Well, psychoanalyze her. Psychoanalyze a horse? Well, they do it to people, don't they? Now get lost for an hour. Hey. Get up there. Morning, ma'am. <laughs> now, the old gal, you and I are going to have a nice, relaxing talk. I'm your friend, and I want to help you. Suppose you just lie down like a nice little girl. Put your head back on that hay. Come on now, lie down. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just relax. Keep that little southern body on that northern hay. And listen to me. Are you comfy? Mm. Now, I want you to think back to your childhood. Way back to the very beginning. Now I need a drink. I'll make you a julep, Grandpa. 
No, mix me a Moscow mule. Tell Dr. Francis all about it. Easy does it, Mr. Sterling. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it easy. Now remember, little girl, you win with your heart. A horse that won't be beat can't. Francis, you've inspired her enough. I'll handle this. Now, please, remember that thought. Every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Now, get in there. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> you know something? If I got that silly filly any more steamed up, she'd overshoot the runway. Excuse me, Francis, but I... I don't think she ought to work more than the half mile, do you? Colonel, either you keep out of my hair or I quit. Well, I was only trying to be helpful. Then you better start seeing about a good jock. But I thought Peter was going to ride Oakwood Gal. In the $100,000 handicap? Why, the kid wouldn't last once around on a merry-go-round. Well, I thought that... Uh, I'll do the thinking. Boy, oh boy. about Oakwood, gal, so I came to check. Well, I reckon we all get a little nervous this close to the big race. I was bedded down there, just so as I keep an eye on things. Oh, well, that's a good idea. You know, Mr. Sterling, I've been watching you work out. And if you don't mind my saying so, you've got the most unusual seat I ever did see. I have? Yes, sir. Is that something you developed yourself? Well, I guess I was born with it. Uh, well, then I guess you're just one of them natural born riders. Oh, <laughs> oh, man, who never thought she'd be in this big race? Well, a couple of people had the idea. Yeah. <laughs> donkey out of the way. Come on, come on. Hey, hey. Uh, police! Come on, get up there. Emergency, all track police to stable one. Somebody call the cops. On the double, stable one. Come on, get the lead out! Help! The donkey done it! Police! Help! Help! Sam! Sam! Oh no, you don't drop the gun! Alright, let's go. Francis. Francis. Doctor, not tell now, me. Not now, Sterling. Not now. The doctors have been in there over an hour. He'll be all right, Peter. I'm sure he will. He's only a mule, but. He's like a mother to me. He's the best friend I ever had. I don't know what I'll do without him. Ooh, take it easy, Doc. If you please, Dr. Marbury, I'm doing this. Well, of course, Dr. Isaac. Scalpel. 
What are you doing? Digging a sewer? I suppose you could do better? Really, Dr. Quimby, I didn't say it. What's that in sponges? Ooh. Got the bullet. Sutures. Ah, are you supposed to be a doctor or a butcher? Very well, Dr. Marbury. You may continue. No, no, Dr. Quimby, I insist. I insist. Will you two quacks make up your mind? Couldn't be. It's impossible. That's what you think. Doctor, doctor, is, is he all right? He? Yeah, yes, he's all right, but... I think we inhaled too much ether. Come on in. Francis. Francis, you're all right. I hope to kiss a duck I'm all right. I was so afraid I was going to lose you. Skip it. You're slobbering all over me. Francis, we were so worried. If there's anything we can do for you. There's something you can do for me right now. Anything you say, Francis. Get the heck off of my tail. <laughs> Is special instruct from Colonel Travers? No, she knows the kind of race she's going to run. She knows? You mean the horse? Uh, well, that is, she'll do it instinctively. I hope you're right, Colonel. She doesn't look like much. Stilling, are you sure you can trust Francis? I'm worried about Oakwood gal. What do you think is wrong with her, Grandpa? I can't figure it out. I've been over her carefully, but she just hasn't got any pep. We better get to Francis right away. Well, I don't suppose you people come over here to talk about my operation. Well, Francis, we're in trouble. There's something wrong with Oakwood gal. That dumb little filly's got stage fright. Stage fright? Yeah, the handicap is big stuff to a racehorse. Well, Francis, you've got to do something. Francis, you've got to do something. Must I run the race, too? Please, Francis. Uh, are you using a lead pony? What's a lead pony? Some horse expert. He's the pony that leads the horse to the starting gate. I never use some of the good gal. Well, this race, you will. A mule? I believe it is. Highly irregular. I've been a member of the Racing Association for 11 years, and I've never seen a mule for a lead pony. Neither have I. starting gate and are now being taken in hand one by one by the assistant starters and going into position for this mile and a quarter handicap. Oakwood Gal is acting a bit fractious at the gate this afternoon. I never saw Oakwood Gal so full of vinegar. They're all in the Looks mighty fishy. Mm. The flag is up. And they're all in the ring. At the start is Oakwood Gal breaking up. Radio strip is second, interval is third, short quarters fourth, Phantom Bell is fifth. Sir Gallant, Lucky Lucky, and Farrell has. The end of the club house turn, Oakwood Gal has opened up a long lead of six lengths. Radio strip is second by a length, interval is third by a half, short quarters fourth by a half. 
Then comes the radio strip, and turning into the back stretch, it is Oakwood Gal making the pace in hand and leading by eight lengths. Short part is second by She's three leading. Quarters. She's Radio's leading. You are not told her a trick or a treat, man. Phantom Bell and Sir Gallant. Around the far turn, it's Oakwood Gal by an inch and a half. Short part is second by a head. Interval is third by a head. Radio strip and Sir Gallant. Come on, not cut her loose. Cut her loose. The Lincoln Origin is open up a long lead. Short part is second, Phantom Bell. People think, huh? That was the most flagrant thing I ever saw. Sir Gallon stopped cold. The horse was deliberately pulled. Oh, I can't believe the Colonel. No one has ever fixed this race before, and they're not going to start now. Bring everyone involved to the office at once. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to hold all tickets. Well, I guess we're all agreed that Sir Gallon stopped cold. That's right, Mr. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Harrington. Gentlemen, whether or not Sir Gallant was pulled, there's been something funny going on at this track ever since this young fellow got here. Oh, quit gal never ran like that in her life. The Colonel Travers and Mr. Rogers, will you wait outside, please? A few people think I had anything to do with fixing the race, you're crazy. We'll see. We've asked that Mr. Mallory be brought here. We're going to get to the bottom of this. I can prove that Mr. Mallory and I both went to the cleaners backing Sir Gallant. Later, Mr. Rogers, we'll hear what you have to say. All right, boys, we'll call you. Now, young man. Ye- yes, sir. According to my information, you've been acting as trainer for Oakwood, gal. Have yes. Uh, well, no. Uh, well, not, not exactly. You see, it was really Francis who was the trainer. Francis? Who's Francis? Francis who? Uh, What's his last name? He doesn't have one. Young man, that's ridiculous. So, well, but you see, for Francis is a... Well? Uh, well, well I imagine... Sterling, one word out of you about a talking mule and... A... Talking mule? Yeah, but Francis really does talk. Oh, oh that's ridiculous. Who ever heard of him? Oh, Jim, I please, know, but this is... Re- Young man, are you trying to tell us you know a mule that talks? No, I mean, well, he's my best friend. Oh. And this... Your friend was Oakwood Gal's trainer? Yes, sir. Young man, do you take us for a bunch of fools? Oh, no, sir. I've been through this talking mule malarkey before. It's a cover-up. There's who? There's me. Who said that? I said it. What? Well, Gee, am I glad you brought Francis. When I told him you were in trouble, he brought me. It, it's, it's true. <laughs> look, look at him. A, a mule talking. Well, look at yourself. You're talking. This is the most unbelievable thing I ever heard of. I must be nuts. I must be losing my mind. Yeah, well, I'm losing my patience. Now sit down, all of you. I still can't believe it. You... You're really talking. Uh, what does it sound like? And you can talk to... to horses? Hey, you catch on quick, bub. What did you do to Oakwood Gal? I just psychoanalyzed her. Uh, you... you what? I convinced her she's ever bit as good as her big brother. Is there anything wrong with that, gentlemen? Wrong? Well... No, no, I... 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 I, I, I don't know. There, there, there's no precedent. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. All right, then. Declare the race official. Oh, just a minute. What about Sir Gallant? You talked him into throwing a race, didn't you? Oh, by the tail of my great aunt regret, I ought to kick your teeth in. Well, you were standing near him at the starting gate. All I did was remind him that Oakwood Gal was his baby sister. I suppose that's what made him stop so suddenly. What else? I knew that moron was too polite to pass his kid sister in the stretch. This is awful. It's the end of horse racing. It's the end of racetracks. It's the end of everything. No more Santa Anita. No more Hollywood Park. No more Churchill Downs. No more Pimlico. Oh, relax. I can talk to horses, but they bore me. Now, Pete here got himself into a jam, and I had to get him out. But from now on, I'm through. No more talking. And if you'll all keep quiet about it, you can all go back to running your little races. The results are declared... Official. Goodbye, Francis. Spelt with an E. With an E. Goodbye again, sir. Goodbye, my boy.
Don't you know you're not supposed to sing with your mouth full? What's on your mind now, chum? Huh? I still don't see why you wouldn't let me keep Oakwood, gal, when the colonel wanted to give her to us. Why? And spend the rest of my life listening to that dumb filly tell me how she won the big handicap? Oh, oh. My bunny lies over the ocean. My bunny lies over the sea. My bunny lies over the ocean. Take it. Oh, bring back my bunny to 